Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again building something from One Piece. I've been watching a lot of the anime since I watched through the whole series three times. Uh, last time I built Luffy's straw hat and I thought why not make a villain this time so I went with Captain Morgan who has like this wicked battle axe hand that he fights with and he also has this pretty sweet little jaw piece that I thought I'd make also while I was at it to kind of give you an opportunity to have like a full cosplay build and all you have to really have to piece together with it is some like clothes. So today I am going to make a two for one, a battle ax and a jaw piece of armor. Real practical, both of them, out of foam. Let's get to building. It took me a couple of tries to get the shape that I wanted for the axe blade. The anime version is pretty even and takes up the whole arm cylinder. The live action is more like the shape I made, with it slightly larger on one end and it sits kind of high on the arm cylinder instead of evenly across. If you want to make your own, print out the template, which is the last link in the description below the video, and cut it out. You will have to tape parts together as this is a relatively large blade and and it fits onto pieces of paper you can print on your printer. I am tracing my pattern onto some 10 millimeter HD foam with a Sharpie. You'll notice that some of my pattern edges have a blue highlighted portion. On my template, this usually means that the edge needs a 45 degree angle cut inward. So you're cutting basically a wedge into the piece from the line. This will allow it to meet its other corresponding piece to make a nice 90 degree angle. I cut out all my parts with a pattern close by to use as a reference. The edges of most of my parts have these little U-shaped cuts in them. These are registration marks, and they are meant to help you align the parts with their corresponding pieces. The weird little swiggly line on two of the circular parts is where I started the wrapping of the piece. It lines up with the seam line on the armband and on the little wood piece on the top. I contact cement my edges, give them a few minutes to set, and when they are no longer wet, I tack them together. Before I glue my axe blade to the armband, I want to go ahead and make my sharpened edges. You could do this while you are cutting out the parts or wait until it's glued up like I did in order to carve it. With a sharp box cutter, I work my way around the arch. Nothing has to be perfect here as I can tidy it up with a rotary tool or use my belt sander outside. Once done, I glue the blade over the seam line to hide it just a little bit or a lot of it. Thank you. 
Now the live action Captain Morgan has this wood stump on the end of his axe like a regular axe would have. I don't really understand the reasoning, but the anime, he has a jagged elbow that sticks out almost like the axe was forced through his stump into his forearm. The construction is similar to the armband, but before assembled, I quickly engrave in some faux wood grain texture with a rotary tool, then glue it in with some contact cement. Before I stick it on the top, I wanted to add just a little bit more variations in my wood grain, so I took a hobby knife and cut a few slices a few millimeters deep. Then to open those cuts up, I hit the surface with a heat gun. The axe is bolted onto the wood center structure and to his arm. To get my bolts, I am just rounding over the end of a 24 millimeter dowel and slicing off the thickness I want. You could also just cut out circles in some 10 millimeter foam. I like doing it this way so I don't have to worry about having an asymmetrical circle. Once shaped and cut, I super glued them to the armband, two on each side. In the live action, the surface of the axe and the armband have almost like a cast iron appearance to them, so in order to mimic that, I'm going to use a little Mod Podge before I Plasti Dip it. At first, I used a sponge and then just kind of stippled it on, but quickly switched over to a chip brush. I put two or three layers to get the texture that I wanted and then set it aside to dry. Two coats of Plasti Dip. 
Because the axe is black, I'm just gonna leave the plasti dip as is for the main coat of the axe. It just needs to be hit on the edge with some silver rub and buff, and the wood needs to be painted a dark brown. Once the dark brown dries, I can hit it with lighter and lighter passes of a light brown using a dry brush technique. Instead of taping off the wavy pattern, I just used the cardboard to block the parts I wanted to stay black. I went ahead and drew this on the template so you could cut this part out and do the same thing I'm doing here. The axe build went relatively quick, so I thought it would be helpful to also include Captain Morgan's other iconic feature, his armored jaw. I templated out the pattern, which will also be attached in the description of the video, and I traced it onto some 4mm high density foam called What the Foam. You could probably also get away with covering it with warbler or something else to make it more rigid if you needed to. Just like before with the axe, I put my pattern close by and begin to make my cuts. The blue get angle inwards and the rest are straight. First, trace the parts as a hole for the jaw armor part, then cut out all the small details on the inside of it to trace on the same thickness of foam for the embossed details. I rounded over most of my edges to soften them a bit and make them seem more wearer friendly. I guess with a metal jaw, it's hard for anyone to lay an effective uppercut on you. I totally think we should bring this into style as a cool accessory. Men with weak chins wouldn't have to grow beards to hide their lack of face, they could just extend it with some armor. It'd be pretty epic. This could also work for like a steampunky vibe if you wanted to.
to help form it to my face a little more, I heat form it with a heat gun to round it over. You could over bend it just a little bit when you are doing this to help it hug your face just a little more. As far as attachments, you could use some of that spirit gum that they use for like latex prosthetics or fake beards. Or what I did for the pictures that I did take with it on, I just used some heavy duty double sided 3M tape and it worked like a champ for the short term applications. Hey, I get to say this twice in one video. Two coats of Plasti Dip. As the Plasti Dip dried, I touched it in a couple of spots to kind of add a bit of texture to mine to look a little more worn. This is definitely not canon as the show one is like chromed out and shiny and the ones on the anime just kind of look like a grayish metal. Using more of that silver rub and buff, I quickly cover the surface with a jagged chip brush. This thing's getting kind of worn out. It has real rust on it at this point. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I think they turned out pretty well. Neither of them were very difficult to piece together. This one took me about a day and a half with figuring out the template and design and waiting on paint and all that stuff to dry. This took me two hours um, from start to finish. Templating it out, cutting it out, gluing it up, and painting it. Um, it, it wasn't very hard at all. So you could definitely throw these two pieces together in a couple of days and have like a last minute Halloween potential costume to go with. All you have to do is piece together some like sailor costume to go over the top of it. But yeah, maybe you will try and make these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull a villain or, or is he a hero or uh, it gets kind of hazy as far as whether or not they're good or bad or both yeah maybe you'll get some yay and inevitably they're gonna ask you how'd you make that and give them one of these tell them much props uh, I'm, I'm just gonna let you wear this and then um I'm gonna hit you with this, so you, you ready? All right, three, two, 
If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together. Thank you.